Currently, in the New York City subway, a train's crew consists of two people. The train operator, who drives the trains, and the conductor, who controls the doors, makes announcements on older stock, and more. Conductors are currently essential to subway operations, but what if I told you that they didn't need to be? In this video, we're going to be talking about one-person train operation and the benefits of implementing it in the New York City subway system. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. One person train operation is the operation of a train by the driver alone without a conductor. The train operator will drive the train and control the doors all on their own. New York City already operates OPTO on various routes in the system, like the Late Night 5 shuttle, the G during weekends, and the Franklin Avenue shuttle. These lines all have something in common though, and that is that they only run with one-person operations during times or locations where ridership is low. While it is good that the MTA at least runs in one-person operation on some lines during certain times, I think this needs to be expanded to more lines during times where ridership is high. A good place to start, I think, would be the 42nd Street Shuttle. Why are the two other main shuttle lines, the Rockaway Park Shuttle and the Franklin Avenue Shuttle, run in one-person operation and not the 42nd Street Shuttle? It just doesn't make sense. It already has the equipment for it, with CCTV screens being present at both Times Square and Grand Central, so I think it can be implemented to allow the other member of the crew to be placed onto another line for better service on it. This same thing can be said for some of the other lines in the system. Now, I think right now, it is impractical to implement OPTO on every line, especially with the unions, However, certain lines in the system are basically ready to run under OPTO at this moment. The line that has the highest possibility to have OPTO implemented on is the Canarsie line, known to most as the L. The L line is already equipped with cameras on both ends of each platform. The L actually used to run OPTO back in 2005, but due to safety concerns, which increased following the 2005-2 bombings, the Transport Worker Union of America caused the MTA to end OPTO operations the following summer. While this does lead some to believe that OPTO is unlikely to return to the system in the near future, it is still possible. However, it will require a bit of fighting with the unions. The MTA needs to find a way to prove to the unions that one-person train operation can still be safe and is a good thing for the MTA to widely implement. Just look at many of the other subway systems that run under one-person operation, like the London Underground. It is not an unknown way of operating a train, but in America, we think we are so different that many of the techniques used overseas or in other countries can't work here. Just look at open gangways. It's taken the Transit Authority over 100 years to purchase open gangway cars for the entire B Division, and since we are unsure that the technology could work, despite it being widely used across the world, we are having a pilot program with only 20 cars. This is something that could greatly increase capacity in the system, and we aren't even ordering 100 of them. Anyways, back to OPTO. Implementing it isn't about getting rid of conductors, but mostly repurposing them. Let's say the L became fully OPTO tomorrow. Many of those conductors originally scheduled to work the L can be placed on other lines in the system to mitigate the effects of crew shortages. Crew shortages has been a big issue for the MTA as of recently, as many workers are becoming sick, just calling out, and retiring. By repurposing conductors originally scheduled to work on a line with OPTO, you would end up improving service for many riders in the system, as they no longer must wait 15 minutes for an F train because some trips were cancelled due to shortages in operators and conductors. OPTO could probably be implemented on more lines than just the shuttles and the L, 
but we'd need to add more cameras to the platforms along with either CCTV screens at the ends of the platforms or to link the CCTV feed to the operator's TOD screens, which is only possible on the NTTs. Now, if you don't know what a TOD is, it's basically the screens that the operators have in front of them that they can look on to find their routes, you know, um, upcoming stations and stuff like that. Now, note that that's only possible on the NTTs, the one that has all of those announcements and stuff. On the older trains we call the SMEs, it wouldn't be possible because those really don't have screens or anything like that. They're basic technology from like the 80s and 70s and 60s and 50s and we can keep going like that, but that's for a dedicated rolling stock video. Anyways, while this may sound easy to implement across the entire system, nothing is ever easy with the MTA and we must think of the cost factor and any other factors that may prohibit the installation of this equipment. Even though there will be a lot of hurdles to overcome with implementing OPTO, it is still a worthwhile addition to many lines in the system as it will only improve service. Now, I did say that the MTA needs to show the union that there are ways to implement OPTO safely, but what if they don't budge? Well, that doesn't mean to stop trying. The MTA could attempt to create a compromise with the union, like only having OPTO operations during off-peak hours and weekends. Even a compromise like that could benefit riders with them having more service on other lines. Now, I know one-person train operation is somewhat of an obscure topic when it comes down to most subway rail fans in this city, but that is what we talk about on this channel. Instead of only focusing on more well-known things that might improve transit in the city, I also like to talk about more obscure topics that many may not know about to open more up to the idea of improving transit. It would be great to see more of the community actually look at ways to improve it rather than just foam and R179 prime wrap. It would also be great for the community to take a look at some of the other transit systems in the world and see what they do better than New York City. Maybe that's too much to ask for though, as they do think New York City has the only subway system in the world. And even those who know about other subway systems still think New York has the best. Odd, I know, but this is America. Anyways though, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me via channel memberships, Patreon, or Super Thanks. Shout out to Stuart Guberman for joining the channel at the train operator tier. Peace.